Bill the Moo featured right there on the cover. Now, it looks like a comic book. It's got the, the drawings inside. It's got the colors. It's even got those little dialogue balloons. But San Diego-based Revolutionary Comics says this is not exactly a comic book. We do real stories about real people. We do the biographies. We are factual and we are authentic. But what Revolutionary Comics is not is authorized. And that's why they're in trouble with the Pittsburgh Penguins over this edition. Well, they say that we are infringing on their copyright and logos. Specifically, Shapiro says the Penguins don't like the drawing of their uniform on the cover, nor the penguin in Lemieux's hand. But this one looks more like the cartoon character Chilly Willy than it does the Pittsburgh Penguins penguin. Still, the Penguins are apparently taking revolutionary comics to court to stop them from selling this edition. It's a case they might win. They might win it by default. Uh, if they would have the nerve to come to San Diego and uh, sue us, we'll defend ourselves here. I don't think we can afford to defend ourselves in Pittsburgh. If the small comic company could fight, it could possibly win. A couple years ago, the rock group New Kids on the Block tried to sue Revolutionary here in San Diego for the same reason. Nearly all the charges were thrown out. And what does the subject of the unauthorized biography have to say about all this? Well, no word from the great Mario Lemieux. He was busy on the ice tonight. But even if he did object, sorry, Mario. Remember the First Amendment? Frank Sinatra didn't like it when Kitty Kelly did it, and I'm sure many other famous people and politicians don't like it either. That's tough. That's the price that they pay for being famous. As, as I take a look at it, though, the penguin may not be the real logo, but on his shirt, that is the actual yeah, logo. Yeah, that's a picture of his uniform or a drawing of his uniform, which does have the logo on it. Mm -hmm. uh, Revolutionary Comics uh, Shapiro there points out that Sports Illustrated recently featured a cover photo of Lemieux in uniform. They do it all the time with different athletes, clearly showing the team's logo, and the penguins certainly aren't suing Time Warner but he suspects it might be because Time Warner is a multi-billion dollar corporation, not an easy mark in court like a little San Diego company. So eh, we'll see what happens on it. All right, we'll be watching. Right. Thanks, Steve. Deadhead fans who follow them on cross-country tours. About his career, Garcia once said he never expected it to be so much fun or last so long. In San Francisco today, Grateful Dead fans gathered at the corner of Haight and Ashbury. That's where the band got its start. Some wore tie-dyed t-shirts and stood outside Ben and Jerry's ice cream store. Garcia was so popular in San Francisco, an ice cream flavor was named after him. In Los Angeles tonight, thousands gathered at Griffith Park for a candlelight vigil in his memory. The news of Jerry Garcia has hit hard people in San Diego as well. As News 8's Ronnie Lawiza reports, fans are mourning his death as only deadheads can. <laughs> Many of these people have come together before at one time or another in the past 20 years at Grateful Dead concerts. This time it's a party at Ocean Beach, a vigil for the death of Jerry Garcia, the kind of wake only a deadhead could appreciate. They come to remember the concerts the dead allowed people to tape and take home, leaving lasting impressions. Every time they're in town or in anywhere near, I would go. It was like, had to be there. When you go you, uh, to regular rock concerts, you feel paranoid. People are fighting, throwing bottles. When you go to a dead show, it's, uh, you're part of a group. You feel safe among 100,000 people. Everybody takes care of each other. If someone gets hurt, they take them for help. Grateful Dead fans, young and old, have been buying up memorabilia of Jerry, like these Jerry Bears, trying to hold on to something while still saying goodbye. The bear is uh, a symbol of the band, and Jerry was uh, quite a, like a bear himself. Rock and roll comic San Diego author Jay Sanford says he practically sold out Grateful Dead editions the minute people found out Jerry died. Uh, when the people started asking for quantities, I ended up saying no. Uh, I was afraid they were going to take them and resell them, up the price, and take advantage of the deadheads. So instead, I'm just going to sell individual copies to individual people until we're all sold out. Real fans? Yeah, the real fans. Garcia in the 90s, much the same as Garcia in the 60s. Same style, same personality, except that he had been hooked on drugs for years and was recently trying to beat his addiction. A large part of my life I've spent doing something which has turned out to be more fun than I thought it was going to be and it's lasted way longer than I imagined it might. But not long enough for his fans. Ronnie Loiza, News 8, Ocean Beach.
Close encounters of the pornographic kind at the comic convention. Comics have crossed the line. KNSD News at 11. are mourning his death as only deadheads can. Many of these people have come together before at one time or another in the past 20 years at Grateful Dead concerts. This time it's a party at Ocean Beach, a vigil for the death of Jerry Garcia, the kind of wake only a deadhead could appreciate. They come to remember the concert.